Uh, hello, I'm Donnell Burroughs. Um, I am a real estate investor with a background in law enforcement, corrections, and currently I'm doing mortgage servicing. I'm the owner of Heloise Capital LLC and real estate investment company based in Maryland with a focus on multifamily syndications. So what does the book look like? You may or may not be able to see it because it may be faded out. Here it is. I can put uh, that picture of that title up on on the the video also, so they can okay. see it clear. I can do that also. I'll do All that right. Later. So, the author of the book is Hunter Thompson. Uh, he's the founder of ASIM Capital. His uh, book, and uh, I'm sorry, his international best-selling book, Raising Capital for Real Estate, is the only book that he's written to date. So. Regarding the table of contents, uh, he goes over everything from his beginnings, um, doing his first portfolio, excuse me, portfolio in Europe, and he ends off uh, talking about how he paved his road from four hundred fifty thousand in annual income. So. Regarding to uh, raising capital real estate, he talks about uh, his interests in uh, 2011. Uh, he first started in the business doing hard money loans for fix and flippers. He began passively investing in syndications later on in 2011. He did his first capital raise in 2013. Uh, his strategy was uh, starting off, he emailed friends and family. He would invite potential investors to lunch or dinner presentations. He attended networking events and he focused on what he would call having a $2,000 night. Um, basically, meaning when he goes, would go to these events, he had to make a contact that he felt was equal to $2,000 in the long run. And those contacts with people he would meet, like investors, people who could refer him to investors, real estate operators, brokers, Excel modeling experts, wholesalers, potential partners, experts in the asset class of whatever your interest may be, networking group leaders, and real estate book authors. So he talks about financial education as well and gives resources that he used and he that he recommends. Starting off with podcasts, uh, and he gives a list of uh, podcasts that he feel would be uh, more beneficial to anyone who's just starting out. Excuse me. Uh, Cash Flow Connections, Real Estate Podcast, Best Real Estate Advice Ever. I believe that's with... Um, I don't want to say his name wrong, but is it, is it Tim Ferriss? Um, I may be getting the wrong individual's name. Uh, apartment Building Investing, The Real Estate Guys Radio Show, Investing in the U.S., Lifetime Cash Flow to Real Estate Investing, How to Lose Money, and the Investor Mindset Broadcast. He also recommends books such as Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Principles, Life, and work by Ray Dalio and pin on it by Chris Ross. He also goes into how you activate your investor base, starting off with creating a contact database chart. The club, the, excuse me, the chart will include whether the contact is a friend or family, where did you meet them, whether they were interested in investing or not, if they're not interested, if they knew someone who is interested. And he also talks about how it's important to have a follow-up system. He also focused on branding. Uh, and he talks about how you should avoid branding that can narrow your growth. For example, you wouldn't want to name your 
investment company, acre self-storage or some name that specifies specific or narrows what your, what your overall focus may be in it with investing. Uh, for instance, I name my company Eloise Capital because there's different areas in real estate I will be investing in. Although I have, I have a focus on multifamily investing, it doesn't mean that would be all I'd be doing. So he stresses to try not to narrow or appear to narrow your focus in your business just in the name of your company. Uh, he also talks about or recommends different companies to um, get your logo done, your business cards, website. And he talks about uh, social media as well as a tool to expand your brand, get your name out there. He goes on talking about the closing of the sale and funding the, excuse me, funding the deal. You want to get your verbal commitment. And this particularly stuck out to me where he doesn't want you to sound like a uh, salesperson. Uh, suggests, suggests that you don't sound like a salesperson. You want, and when you speak to him, he said to, uh, basically suggest things. You don't want to come off like you're trying to push them into committing to an investment, that you educate them, show them what it is that you, show them who you are, what it is that you do, talk about the features and benefits, and to be very transparent, to not leave anything out because you, because of fear you think you may not be able to get to get them to invest. And in the case of um, them being hesitant, like if you speak to someone, they want to talk it over their spouse. He says this, that it's important that you basically be easy going, uh, allow them the time to figure it out. But at the same time, because you're raising capital. So you, you don't want to uh, leave out an open to where they, you know, if, a per, if, you, if you spoke to a person and left it up to them, they might want to take two weeks to think about it. But because you're raising capital and you want to track the uh, allocation of the equity, you want to give them some sort of time frame. But even when you do that, you ask, you no, know, it is okay if I can call you back in five days. And just tell them that, you know, that we want to make sure that we're tracking our asset allocation. So if you can, this period of time, that's great, but we just need to know. Um, so I skipped. Um, he also mentioned that after you get the verbal commitment, you want to have them to sign the legal documents necessary because that reserves, I'm sorry, the res at that point, the reservation becomes the commitment. And he goes over um, how you go over or face challenges when you're raising capital, uh, using something he calls the challenging decision algorithm. And basically what that is, is a method of, of addressing whatever challenges or situations that may come up during the syndication. Similar to what he uh, spoke of when I was talking earlier about how if you run into, um, if the person has any sort of, any sort of doubts or reservations, ba basically throughout the process, you want to face things head on and you do the same thing uh, with this. He just has a terminology for it. And Anytime you run into something, you know, you, you face it head on, you allow the person to go through their process, you ask them questions, answer their questions to make them feel comfortable in what it is they're about to do. Implementation of the algorithm is doing what's best for the investor long-term. 
Uh, this is something that stuck out to me as well, because a lot of times in sales, I would say in general, salespeople can tend to get a bad name. And I, and I think everyone is probably familiar with at least one uncomfortable sales experience in their life. And he makes a point to or prides himself to, to not give his clients that experience. He wants to make them feel comfortable, make them feel secure, and most of all, have them feel as if this is a decision they're making, not that you pull, uh, twisted their arm or persuaded them in any way. It was purely an educated decision they made for their own good. And then he uh, gives his advice for anyone starting out, anyone that may be interested in doing real estate, uh, excuse me, syndications. And he talks about having a sense of urgency to, to accomplish your goals, to uh, not be lackadaisical or to procrastinate, but to have a sense of urgency, you know, give us, give us our goals and set a timeline. And he talks about how, how you should have a high speed of execution and implementation, attention to detail and high demand for excellence. And I think that kind of goes into uh, brand building as well. Uh, something I experienced myself um, early on in my career in mortgage servicing um, was something uh, that I took on myself. Um, I became very well known for the quality of my work and, and, and that's what he's talking about here. You want to to build your brand and create a strong reputation for yourself so that you can get repeat investors, referrals, you know, people want to do business with you. Have an obsession with growth and curiosity about new topics and a desire to, and a desire, excuse me, a desire for expertise. Um, I want to go back a little bit and, and uh, kind of reflect on what I was talking about with, with sales. Uh, what I didn't put in my bio, I, I forgot to put in there. <laughs> I had to think about that if I did it. Uh, but I have a background in sales myself. Um, I sold cars before. Uh, I currently have an insurance license. Uh, but I remember particularly when I was selling cars uh, in the beginning, um, it was a rough experience for me because everything I talked about as far as sales that was negative, that was exactly what I was encouraged to do. You know, you don't, you don't let them leave out the door. If you can't, if you can't close yourself, the sale yourself, you come and get, and you get a manager. And people can sense when you're trying to force them into something. I don't care how you try to finesse it; they can sense that. And I was very uncomfortable with that. Uh, versus uh, what I do now. Um, with sales and insurance, the, the company that I that I work with, they handle business and encourage us to handle business much like uh, Hunter talks about in the book. You educate people on what it is that you do, who you are, show them features and benefits, and you allow them to make the decision. If they buy, great. If they don't, great. So that's it. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Thanks, Darnell. You're welcome.